Is this the best smartwatch deal ever? Mibro GS arrives with an inbuilt GPS, AMOLED display, health tracking features, and a lot of bold promises with a launch price of just $56. Is there a catch? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome! Nice to meet you, Michael is my name, and on the channel we inspect a lot of cool and fresh tech. So 2022 as a year is going to be always associated as a very challenging year because we can see the price increases of electronic devices and all these delays of manufacturing and troubles that most companies are having. And then all of a sudden, just before the end of the year, a company called Mibro drops this buddy, which has a pretty nice looking AMOLED display, inbuilt GPS and the launch price. This has been the big surprise. It's not $156, as many of you would expect. It's not $106. This buddy has been launched for just 56 bucks. But I need to underline it's been during the Black Friday campaigns. And right now the price is around $80ish, which I still believe is a very good price about what you get. But our task here, unlike what ads do, is to thoroughly inspect what this smartwatch is capable of to highlight its positives, its negatives and make a thorough inspection so that you get a good idea whether that's the right choice for you. You may not be aware of it, but Mibro are one of the really big companies about smartwatches. They not only produce the brand Mibro, but also developed OEM and ODM services and ship millions of units each and every year. With the Mibro brand launched in 2020, it is setting as one of the popular affordable brands for smart wearables these days. In the particular case of the GS model, feels that it's gonna be often compared to Huawei Watch GT series, the Honor GS models, some of the Amazfit devices like the GTR and the T-Rex models. Unboxing as a starter of the hardware walkthrough, it looks good, don't you think? No sign from the way the first model was packed, and this is indeed a very pleasant improvement because while it doesn't feel that premium, it definitely shows that now Mibro are taking care of building good reputation around their brand. However, could be just my unit or the first batches, but there's a specific smell that I can sense which is not quite nice. The watch feels plastic, the whole case feels rugged, actually pretty nice looking, the design is really pleasing and there's nothing bad to say about it. The lugs are a bit of a concern though, because they are plastic. The bottom side is also very well designed and in fact it reminds me a lot of some of the Tic watch models. See these LEDs at the bottom? They are part of the health tracking sensor stack, which is in contact with your wrist. If you want to get to know more about the technical specs, I've got you covered. A dual-core chipset, 1.43-inch AMOLED display, 460mAh battery, 24-hour heart rate tracking, SpO2 tracking, stress and sleep tracking, GPS satellite positioning support, 70 tracked workout modes, ability to respond to notifications, the watch is waterproof and has a companion smartphone app called Mibro Fit. So the specs are good, but probably not as good as the build quality and the overall design of the Mibro GS, because I would say this body <laughs> looks stunning. So in terms of hardware presence, there is no speaker, there is no microphone, meaning that you cannot make any relayed Bluetooth phone calls. Uh, there is no NFC chip, meaning that you cannot make any contactless payments. And overall, if we sum the hardware up, if you think of the Mi Band series, and then add a GPS function, something like the Mi Band 7 Pro, then <laughs> yes, this is kind of equivalent to what this smartwatch is actually capable of. I'm really pleased with the display because you can see how well each one of the watch faces looks. Unfortunately, there is no ambient light sensor, meaning there is no auto brightness functionality. And truth is that in terms of uh, connectivity and functions and the overall operating system performance, there's really a lot to wish for. For the software part, let's begin with how you interact with the watch. Two side buttons, the top one is a home button and an app launcher. The other button is configurable, by default it launches the workouts, where you can choose among the available 70 out of them. The rest you can control via taps or swipes. The unusual thing is that swiping left or right actually switches between the different watch faces, perhaps an idea copied from the Apple Watch series. Swipe down in order to check the quick settings, swipe up and these are the notifications, which by the way are very well visible. The display seems to have excellent resolution, which well pays off with good visibility. 
As for amount of apps, there are not too many, and as stated, they are fitness tracker-like. Health tracking functions are shown at the top in case you use the grid sorting options. And if we go down the list, some productivity apps like Calculator, Compass, a Stopwatch and similar. There even is a calendar app, but it doesn't seem to have access to your actual phone's calendar. Not yet at least. Looks like the Mibro software team has gone a long way and this list here looks better structured and better translated and scrolling speed is also quite nice. You wouldn't feel the stunning Samsung Galaxy Watch-like performance, but overall it's nowhere near annoying. Probably because Mibro have added enough other things to annoy you. As a starter, the lack of main cards, which is kind of weird, so is the strange look of the heart rate tracking app. Quite primitive SpO2 measuring implementation, in fact, all the health tracking features show just a limited amount of information, so we keep our hopes the smartphone app to compensate about this. The music app looks nice, it's going to control whatever is running on your phone. If you play offline files, it can go to the previous or the next track and treat streaming apps like Spotify in a very similar way. As for sports, easy to start a workout and there even is the possibility to control music while you're running, for instance. GPS locks the signal within around a minute if the weather is cloudy, and to some of the capabilities of this operating system, it clearly is a step up compared to the first Mibro smartwatch, but still lacks the amount of features, the configurability and the polished menus which we find with watches like Amazfit GTR and Huawei Watch GT series. Therefore, we have high hopes about the smartphone app. It's called Mibro Fit, it's available for Android and iOS, and well, it looks good. However, you can't connect to the watch unless location services are on, all the time. And also, you must synchronize the watch each and every day, because otherwise, data is gonna be missing. If you skip a day, the data is gone. This is really disappointing and something that an old device like Mi Band 4 can handle in a much better way. Looking at the sleep cycles, you can see some details, but no information about REM, which is a very important component. What is even more shocking is the workout summary, or the lack of it, because there is no detailed information about sports, not even a map drawn based on the collected by the GPS data. Good news, maybe Mibro is going to upgrade the app and it's gonna show more sports details eventually. Could be that by the time you watch this review, all the sections look as good as the daily health summary, for instance. But overall, this is all quite basic and lacks really a lot of functions. Integration with third-party services like Strava and Google Fit are not yet available. Even the ability to change some features on the watch itself are hard to find. Mibro promised the watch is gonna be able to respond to notifications, but this is something not ready a month after the launch in December 2022. On the other hand, if you want to hear something really positive, all these corners cut help the watch to pay off with superb battery life. With always on display mode during the day and all the tracking features on, it can last around 10 days. Without always on display, we talk about 2 to 3 weeks, maybe even a month. As you know, before we wrap it up, Time to summarize all the drawbacks. Starting from the pretty basic operating system, the lack of main cards, the lack of REM tracking, the inability to make contactless payments, there is no auto brightness feature, no speaker, no microphone, and sports tracking is still very limited. If I were you, I would pick the Mi Pro GS because of the pretty awesome design, because of the good build quality, this stunning display for its price point, the insane battery life, and the rather affordable price because it undercuts most of its competitors. But at the same time, it's true that software is not that polished yet and there's really a lot to wish from the operating system itself and also from the smartphone app. But if you can live with all these shortcomings I've highlighted through this review, then maybe this could be the right choice for you at the right budget and even always on display, which for this price point is quite remarkable. So, do you like where Mibro bring us with the GS? Do you think they are on the right path with their software development? Because, at least from my point of view, there's a huge improvement as compared to their first wearable. Anything you have to say would be really nice to read. Comment down below and I invite you to check what the others think about this awesome smartwatch. And thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael 
and I'll be happy to present you more cool tech inspections on the channel, so be subscribed. See ya! Thank you.